Right, operation amplifiers um, make a signal bigger. Make signals that don't have a very big gain, so that they're not going to be used to, to power, anything, power anything big like a loudspeaker or a motor or anything, but they make the signals bigger. You put an input into an operation amplifier and they can get them, they can make things bigger. They have certain gains, which makes the signals bigger. Right? The basic parts of an operation amplifier on the board, you've got your two inputs, your V1 and your V2. Uh, V1 is the potential difference between ground and the t that longer terminal on the top, which is connected to the inverting input. And V2 is the potential difference between ground, the zero volts, and the positive non-inverting input. So you get two inputs, inverting and non-inverting. Uh -huh. V1 always going to be less than V2? Always going to be more than V2? No. So why is... V1 is not always going to be more than V2. So that's why you have a positive and a negative power supply. Yeah. You'll explain that. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll sort out what different values V1 and V2 can be when we do the different modes they can be in. But just take in what the different parts are called and I'll give you the rules for what makes our operation amplifier. So V1 and V2. Um, V1 is always going to go into negative. V2 is always going to the positive terminal. Now, to make something bigger, you need to give it more energy. Uh, to make to increase the voltage of a signal, then you need to give it more energy. So they have the power supply, voltage supply. You have a positive and a negative voltage supply because the, the output can be either positive or negative. And we measure the output, which is the potential difference between the ground and the output terminal there. Now, it's all very well given the parts of the operational amplifier. There is other parts that come into play when we look at the different modes, but that's the basic parts of it. And to make an operational amplifier a proper operational amplifier, or to make it different from any other circuit, it has two certain conditions. Okay? And these two set of conditions are. So the two conditions that make an op amp what it is, is that first of all, there must be no current flowing in, no input current, because the resistance of the op amp is so high that it's not allowing the current to flow into it. And also there must be no potential difference between the terminals. If there was any potential difference between the terminals, then you're going to have voltage start before you even start trying to make it any bigger. You're going to have an uh, inherent voltage inside it, which is not, it's going to totally um, make all your results wrong. So it has to have no potential difference between input terminals. Now, this does not come up very often. But when it does come up, it's a type of question, okay, these are some of the things, it's multiple choice usually, and it says, it gives you maybe half a dozen different <coughs> properties that you might make an op amp, and you must pick the right one or the right two. Okay? And an actual long answer question, the chances of this coming up are quite small. But it's like a, a fact you need to learn. No input current and no PD across the inputs. They're the two little things that make an op-amp what it is. Right? So it's just something you have to remember. 